For most of human history, the cat barely registers in the story of civilization. It builds no monuments, it plows no fields, it does not pull carts, guard camps, or follow commands. And yet, wherever humans settled, wherever grain was stored, wherever ships crossed open water, the cat eventually appeared. Not loudly, not by force, but with a persistence so quiet that for thousands of years we misunderstood how it happened. This raises a deceptively simple question. When did cats truly become domestic animals? And where did that transformation begin? For decades, the answer seemed settled. We were told that cats were domesticated nearly 10,000 years ago in the Middle East, alongside the first farmers of the Neolithic world. As agriculture spread westward into Europe, cats followed, keeping rodents at bay and gradually slipping into human households. It was a tidy story, logical, comfortable, and, as new evidence now shows, incomplete. The modern cat descends from the African wildcat, Felis libica, a solitary elusive animal native to North Africa and parts of the Middle East. Archaeological remains and early genetic studies seem to support the idea that humans formed a relationship with these wildcats shortly after the dawn of agriculture. One of the most famous discoveries appeared to seal the case. In 2004, Archaeologists excavating a Neolithic tomb in Cyprus uncovered the skeleton of a cat carefully buried beside a human. The grave dated to around 7,500 BCE. To many researchers, this suggested companionship. Ancient art reinforced the impression. In Egypt, cats were carved into reliefs, painted on walls, even shown wearing collars. Some gods bore feline faces. By 2000 BCE, cats were clearly woven into Egyptian society. The dominant narrative took shape, first domesticated in the Near East, refined in Egypt, carried into Europe by early farmers. Early genetic evidence seemed to agree. In 2017, researchers analysing mitochondrial DNA from ancient cat remains concluded that domestic cats began spreading from the Middle East roughly 6,500 years ago, but there was a problem hiding in plain sight. Mitochondrial DNA tells only part of the story passed down exclusively through the maternal line, it preserves a narrow slice of ancestry. Useful, but incomplete. A fuller answer required something more ambitious. Whole genomes. To uncover that deeper history, an international team led by paleogeneticist Claudio Atoni assembled one of the largest collections of ancient feline DNA ever studied. They gathered genetic material from 225 ancient cat remains, spanning more than 10,000 years alongside samples from modern wildcats in North Africa and the eastern Mediterranean. After radiocarbon dating and careful filtering, the team reconstructed 87 complete genomes. What emerged from the data was unexpected. Cats living in and around early Neolithic settlements were not the ancestors of today's house cats. Genetically, they resembled modern European wildcats, Phallus silvestris. These animals were not pets. They likely hovered at the edges of human communities, drawn by food scraps, grain stores, and rodents. Some were hunted, some were tolerated, a few were even buried with care, but they were not domesticated in the way previously assumed. The true ancestors of modern house cats appeared much later. When the team examined feline remains from the last 2,000 years, a clear shift emerged. The oldest genetically identifiable domestic cats in mainland Europe, dated to the first century, CE. This was not the Neolithic world of early farmers. This was the age of empires. These cats were closely related to African wildcats, still found today in regions around Tunisia. Their genetic signature pointed not to the Middle East, but to North Africa. The conclusion was inescapable. Domestic cats did not slowly follow farmers into Europe thousands of years ago. They arrived rapidly and relatively recently. For some researchers, this result overturned a long standing assumption. The earlier mitochondrial signal, it turned out, had been misleading. Whole genome analysis revealed that no large-scale feline migration into Europe occurred 6,500 years ago. The supposed trail of early domestic cats simply was not there. Instead, the spread of cats coincided with a different force. Trade, urbanisation and war. By the early Roman period, cities had grown dense, permanent and crowded with stored food. Grain attracted rodents, rodents attracted cats. For a small predator adapted to human-altered environments, Roman cities were ideal. So were Roman roads, ports and military camps.
the genetic trail followed the empire's reach. Feline remains recovered from Roman military sites in Austria, Serbia and Britain clustered tightly with modern domestic cats. These animals moved with legions, merchants and supply chains, slipping into new territories as Rome expanded. Before that expansion, cats likely travelled by sea. Phoenician and Punic traders maintained vast maritime networks across the Mediterranean, linking North Africa with Sardinia, Iberia and beyond. The genetic data suggests early domestic cats hitched rides on ships, quietly dispersing along trade routes long before written records even noticed their presence. One enigmatic population of wild cats in Sardinia turned out to be descendants of these North African felines, a living genetic echo of ancient maritime trade. And the story does not stop in Europe. Ancient DNA from feline bones in China reveals that domestic cats reached East Asia around 1400 years ago, traveling alongside merchants moving along the Silk Road. Earlier feline remains in the region belong not to domestic cats, but to local leopard cats. These animals too lingered near human settlements, feeding on rodents, forming loose associations without full domestication. A pattern repeats, cats approach humans on their own terms. This is what makes the cat different. Unlike dogs, which show clear physical and behavioral changes under domestication, cats change little. They retain their independence, their hunting instincts, their aloofness. They were never fully shaped by human hands. Instead, they exploited human environments with remarkable efficiency. According to Atoni, the speed of their spread tells the story. In just two millennia, cats colonized nearly every inhabited region of the old world. Not because humans needed them in rituals or labor, but because urban life created a niche only cats could fill. The next chapter of this story may lie buried in Egypt itself. Atoni's team plans to analyze ancient DNA from mummified cats, some of the most iconic yet genetically fragile remains of all. Extracting usable DNA from these specimens is notoriously difficult, but if successful, it could further refine the timeline or shift it once again. The history of the domestic cat, it seems, is not a single moment of domestication, but a long negotiation, a quiet alignment of interests. Humans built cities, stored grain, attracted rodents, and cats watching from the margins simply stepped in. They were never conquered. They were invited, not through force or command, but through proximity. They stayed because it worked, because human worlds created opportunities no wild landscape could match. Over generations, that choice reshaped them, subtly and unevenly. And in the process, it reshaped us as well. If you enjoyed this story, consider subscribing for more journeys into the hidden history shaped by science and evidence.